All right, let us start today with uh, trying to establish a little more carefully this uh, problem in random box about recurrence. Um, I have been throughout mentioning that uh, in one dimension on a line for instance, uh, the first passage from any point to any other point is certain for normal diffusion is a sure event. And I have also been saying that uh, uh, the mean time for first passage is infinite however, in the unbiased case. And we also saw what happens when you have bias this first passage to any point is not a sure event or a return to the origin in a linear lattice for example, is not a sure event. I have also often on mentioned that in one and two dimensions walks are recurrent in the sense that if you do not have any bias then starting anywhere you are guaranteed to get to any other point return to this point any number of times an infinite number of times uh, possibly with a mean time between events which is infinite. Uh, we need to establish this. So, we will do that in one particular context and then this uh, result can be actually generalized. After that I want to go back uh, to what we had started looking at namely non Markov box and I want to put that in a slightly more general framework because there are lots and lots of physical processes which cannot be described by Markov processes or Markov chains and for which you need something of a generalization. Uh, one of these generalizations is called a renewal process and we will talk a little bit about renewal theory. Okay. Uh, so, first um, about the problem of recurrence and let me do this in the context of uh, random box on lattices which are either linear or a square lattice or a cubic lattice or a hypercubic lattice in d dimensions. The problem is uh, the, the, uh, the physical phenomenon of recurrence depends on the dimensionality and not on the actual lattice structure. So, if a walk is recurrent for say a simple cubic lattice, it is also recurrent for a face centered cubic and so on. There could be minor changes of details depending on the lattice structure. For instance, in three dimensions it will turn out that uh, an unbiased walk is transient, it is not recurrent. So, the total probability of return to the origin for example, is less than 1, but what number that is between 0 and 1 will depend on the actual lattice structure. Okay. So, let us try to put this in a slightly general context. I have in mind a d dimensional. Uh, uh, so, this vector r is an element of uh, it is a site in a d dimensional lattice and let us uh, call its coordinates for example, j 1, j 2, j d just to remind ourselves that uh, these are integers. So, they are lattice points they run over all the integers. Okay. And now, I want to ask the question if I start at the origin, uh, I want to find for example, p the probability that you are at any point r at time t or in discrete time it would be n given the fact that you started at say the origin at t equal to 0. So, this is the quantity we need to compute which we can do fairly straightforwardly if it is a Markov process. And then remember that the problem of recurrence came about in the following way. In the one dimensional case we had explicitly a thing like p of j n 0 and then I said the generating function for this quantity for this probability z to the power n summed over from n equal to 1 to infinity. I had a symbol for this I do not remember what I called it pi j 0 of z to be called that is the symbol I use for it. And then I said that the first time if it hits the point j this would be f of uh, j n 0 this is the probability that starting at 0 you hit the site j for the first time and the generating function for this was n equal to 1 to infinity. I call this uh, phi j 0 
all of a sudden. phi j0 of z, right? it is summed over n. Um, and then the statement was that phi 0 0 of z was equal to pi 0 0 of z over 1 plus pi 0 0 of z. That was the relation which we got by using the renewal equation between the generating functions. And just to refresh your memory, if phi 0 0 of 1 is equal to 1, then recurrence to the origin is a sure event because it says the sum over all these probabilities without this z is 1. Okay. Now, the way that can happen is for this to diverge. That is the only way it can happen. So, if this quantity tends to infinity, then you are sure that a recurrence to the origin is a sure event. And if you do this on an infinite lattice, this is true for in general for Markov chains. But if you now do this on a, a lattice and talk about the random walk problem in that context, then it is clear that for the random walk problem on a linear lattice for example, where the sites are labeled by J. In this case, so, so you have an, a random walk on a linear lattice. In this case, it is clear by translational invariance that pi j j of z is equal to pi 0 0 of z. This probability depends only on uh, you can choose any point as the origin essentially and similarly it also follows that phi j j of z equal to phi 0 0 of z. So, although I spoke about return to the origin, I could have chosen any point and said return to that point. Okay. It is exactly the same thing. So, we want this quantity to diverge in some sense. No? In other words, you want this quantity summation n equal to 1 to infinity p of j n j should be equal to infinity implies recurrence. So, we want to check if this quantity is divergent or not and that is what we want to do in higher dimensions in the general context of a Markovian random walk on a d dimensional lattice. Let us say it is a hypercubic lattice and I want to find out if starting at any site say the origin, the probability of coming back to that site at time n, that probability if you sum over n does it give you infinity or not. If it does then this quant then this walk is recurrent. Okay. So, this is what we want to check out and I would like to specifically prove that for 1 and 2 dimensions this quantity will diverge, but in 3 and higher dimensions it will converge and therefore, the walk will not be recurrent. This is what we would like to establish. Okay. So, let us see how to do that and we will do this uh, we will not spell out all the details, but we will do this by writing out what this equation is actually. Now, what is p of r n starting at the origin say? What is this thing equal to? Well, in any general lattice, here is the point r, the lattice point r and it has got a certain number of nearest neighbors. In a hypercubic lattice for instance, uh, there are neighbors on this side, on this side and front and back. So, in all three dimensions there are neighbors. Okay. And we need some unit vectors to denote these neighbors. So, these unit vectors would for example, be E x, E y, E z in a cubic lattice in three dimensions. So, let us suppose that you have uh, R is therefore, j 1 to j d and you have unit vectors E 1 up to E d. These are the unit vectors in the Cartesian along the Cartesian axis in d dimensional space. Okay. Now, this gets fed in because it is a Markovian walk. In the previous step, you should have arrived at one of the nearest neighbors and then from that 
point from any of the nearest neighbors, you are going to jump into this point here with probability equal to 1 over 2 d because the number of nearest neighbors in d dimensions is 2 d in a cubic lattice, right. So, this is equal to 1 over 2 d p of r minus e i summation from i equal to 1 to d right at time n minus 1 and that is it that was the difference equation. We also subtracted from this minus p of r n minus 1 and then you can go to the continuum limit if you like or else you can call this quantity the discrete Laplacian or whatever you can do this right. So, writing it out explicitly this guy here uh, was of the form. Uh, so, we had an equation of the form p of r n 0 was equal to 1 over uh, minus p of r n minus 1 0 this quantity equal to 1 over 2 d summation i equal to 1 to d uh, uh, p of r plus or minus you need both because you can have a jump from here into this or from this into that both vectors you got to, there are 2 d nearest neighbors you got to do that right. So, you can write this as p of uh, r plus e sub i Uh, at time n minus 1 0 plus p of r minus e sub i n minus 1 times 0 minus twice p of uh, r n minus 1 0. That was the discrete Laplacian right. Now, let us just check you are going to sum this d times. So, the 2 cancels against this and the d will cancel against the d here. So, indeed I have subtracted 1 and now you can proceed to the continuum limit of this guy. So, this is the usual Markovian walk right, but now how do you solve a thing like this? The solution is obvious what we should do is do a Fourier transform in space right. So, let us define a Fourier transform with respect to the space variables. So, let us write uh, p of r n starting from the origin. Let us write this as equal to 1 over 2 pi to the power d an integral d d k in d dimensions. Uh, I use the symbol k very often for a lattice point. So, let us call it q or something like that. This is the momentum the conjugate variable q d dimensional integral. Uh, times e to the i q dot r right, times p tilde of q and n. Okay. So, that is my Fourier transform, but this is periodic this p is on a lattice this guy is on a lattice. So, you have to integrate over the fundamental period which is minus pi to pi for each of the components of q because it is periodic ok. And now or another way of saying it is that this r is uh, p of r is 0 except when r is a lattice point. So, it is just a bunch of uh, supported only on the lattice points. So, formally one can write a thing like this. Then what happens here if I plug this in into this equation if I do a Fourier transform here then it becomes clear that p tilde of q n equal to I am going to leave out factors and things like that 2 pi is etcetera we can adjust that this is equal to uh, 1 over 2 pi to the power d an integral etcetera. Let us plug that in and see what immediately what is going to happen you are going to have q dot r plus e i. this is what is going to appear inside. So, write it as q dot e to the i q dot r plus e sub i this is equal to e to the i q dot r plus 
plus e to the i q i because that is the unit vector. So, the moment I put this in I am going to get an extra phase factor e to the q i q i and from this guy I am going to get e to the minus i q i and I sum both these I get 2 cos q i right and that is going to happen for each one of these fellows. So, this gives you finally 1 over d summation i equal to 1 to d cos q i the 2 goes away in the cosine in the definition of the cosine right. So, I got e to the i q i plus e to the minus i q i which is 2 cos whatever it is and this 2 cancels here and I am left with just 1 over d cos q i and this fellow multiplies p tilde of q n minus 1 because that is the same thing out here. I have taken out that extra factor due to these 2 guys and you are left with just that from this equation ok. So, that is a very simple solution now it is just a recursion relation in which the Fourier transform at time n is some constant times the Fourier transform at time n minus 1 right. So, this implies this is equal to 1 over d summation i equal to 1 to d cos q i to the power n p tilde of q and 0 ok with just this factor. But what is p tilde of q comma 0? It is the Fourier transform of the initial distribution. The initial distribution we started with uh, uh, the assumption this fellow here satisfies p of r 0 0 vector equal to a delta function a d dimensional delta function at 0. I start from the origin it is just a d dimensional delta function and we want the Fourier transform of that which is 1 with this normalization here I put this guy in here is equal to 1 ok. So, that solves this this guy here is equal to 1. So, you immediately see that all you have to do is to replace this by 1 over d summation i equal to 1 to d cos q i to the power n. If you can do the inverse Fourier transform of that you got the probability distribution formally, but now we can therefore ask what is pi 0 0 and these are vectors now 0 0 of z of 1. This is equal to a summation over n n equal to 0 to infinity n equal to 1 to infinity it does not matter 0 to infinity adds a 1 we just we are going to show it diverges. So, we are not interested in this 1 or not. 1 over 2 pi to the power d integral minus pi to pi d d q e to the i q dot r, but I put r equal to 0 it is the origin right. So, that factor goes away and you are left with 1 over d summation cos q i i equal to 1 to d to the power n. But that sum can be done. This is just a geometric series. We can do this sum, and this is notice that uh, these cosines are less than one in magnitude, and there's a d sitting here. So this number is a number less than one, and therefore you can sum it the geometric series, and it gives you one over two pi to the power d integral minus pi to pi d d q divided by 1 minus 1 over d 
well, let us write it out cos q 1 plus dot dot plus cos q d. And that is the answer for pi 0 0. Right? Now, if this diverges, if this integral diverges, then the walk is recurrent, return to the origin is sure. But if it converges, we know that the probability of a return to the origin is less than 1. Okay. Now, how would you do this integral? These are magnitudes of q 1 to q d. So, the way to do this is to try to do this in spherical polar coordinates. This is called a Watson integral. It appears in lattice dynamics very often when you study the normal modes of vibrations of lattices. This sort of thing will appear. This precise factor depends on the fact that we started with a hypercubic lattice. You would get different factors here because the unit vectors would be different in different lattice systems, but you would get something similar to this. Right? Now, can it diverge at all? Well, if it diverges, it is got to do so at the origin at q equal to 0. You got to see what the behavior of this fellow is. If q vector equal to 0, each component is 0. So, all these fellows become 1 and cancels against the d. The 1 will cancel against this and give you a divergence in the denominator, which should be, it could still be finite, depends on what is happening on top here. So, we are looking at what is going on near the origin in the magnitude of this. So, if you did this in spherical polar coordinates for instance, you wrote it out and I wrote out an expansion of this for small values of q i. The leading term is q squared. The 1 cancels against this here. So, the denominator goes like q squared magnitude. So, you certainly have q squared in the denominator but upstairs remember you have q to the d minus 1 d q. So, near the origin this is going to behave like that if at all it diverges. This factor is going to go like q squared where this q squared stands for q 1 squared plus etcetera up to q d squared square of the magnitude and upstairs you have that phase space factor <coughs> volume uh, element q to the d minus 1 d q. So, d equal to 1, you have integral 0 d q over q squared. This tends to infinity, no doubt about it. Right? d equal to 2, this is 0 q d q, because in one dim in two dimensions, the line element is r d r, the volume element, the area element is r d r d theta, whatever. So, there is a q d q divided by q squared which is like d q over q this tends to infinity. So, in both 1 and 2 dimensions this is how you show that the walk is definitely recurrent. Okay. In 3 you can see this integral becomes finite. In 3 dimensions d equal to 3 you have integral q squared d q divided by q squared near the origin. This is less than infinity. This is finite. Okay. So, this is the reason why uh, return to the origin is sure in 1 and 2 dimensions. The walk is recurrent for unbiased walk and in 3 and higher dimensions it is uh, transient. The actual probability, total probability of a return, you must compute the first passage time, etcetera. You must compute this integral and compute pi 0, 0 and then extract the coefficient of z or put z equal to 1 to get the total probability of return to the origin. Remember very carefully that this quantity itself, this summation itself, summation p of r n. 0 sum from 1 to infinity here. This is not a sum over mutually exclusive events probabilities. This is not 1. I mean this, this quantity can be as large as you please. That is why it is diverging out here. Okay. On the other hand, this quantity 
f of r n 0, this quantity cannot diverge, it cannot be bigger than 1. If it is equal to 1, you know the event of first return is a sure event, otherwise it must be less than 1, right. Because its very structure as you can see in the general case we saw a relation like pi uh, j um, uh, k j of z was equal to uh, phi, phi k j of z was pi k j of z over 1 plus pi k k of z. This thing here was the generating function for p of k n j z to the power n sum from n equal to 1 to infinity this quantity here. We said z equal to 1 here then this quantity here on this side this cannot diverge this quantity the sum over probability is that we put z equal to 1 it cannot diverge ok. On the other hand pi can this quantity may well be divergent and that is what we have shown here this object here is divergent. If it is convergent then we need to find that ratio to find out what is the actual first passage time or return time distribution like or what is generating functions like ok. I hope this is clear this is not this is not a probability okay. this guy is a probability there are sum over probabilities here uh, this is sum over first time return probabilities and the total probability cannot exceed 1. So, we have been very careful to skirt the issue. Computing this requires you to compute this and the behavior of this dictates whether it will recur or not ok. All right. So, much for this uh, return probability. I computed uh, in the one dimensional case we actually saw what uh, the return distribution was. For instance, return to the origin uh, I think we got something like in 1 D with uh, alpha equal to beta equal to half, we found that phi 0 0 of z was 1 minus square root of 1 minus z square. That is the result we got right for the generating function of uh, return to the origin. Now, of course, if you did an expansion of this in power series, it is clear from this that it is singular at z equal to 1 straight away you can see that. You put z equal to 1 you get 1 which means the walk is recurrent hmm, in the unbiased case. But the coefficient of z to whatever power z to the power k will give you the first return uh, probability that the first return occurs at time k. Now, the fact that this is a function of z squared tells you that only even powers of z can appear that is a reflection of the fact that if you start at the origin on a linear lattice you can get back to the origin only in an even number of steps. So, p f will be 0 for odd n right and we can expand what this fellow is this is equal to the first term this is a 1 minus 1 minus z squared over 2 and then uh, plus half into half minus 1. So, that is minus 1 and then 2 factorial. So, 1 8 z 4 dot 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 right. So, this gives you z squared over 2 plus z 4 over 8 plus dot dot dot. all terms are positive yes. they have to be positive yes. hmm? for for z equal to 1 have to ok. Now, this series as it stands will converge this binomial series converges for mod z less than equal to for mod z less than equal to 1. It is got it is got a singularity at z equal to 1 the square root singularity, but it is quite finite at that point. And now you can see that the probability that you are going to start uh, you are going to come back to the origin at the second step equal to half that is the coefficient of z squared and that is trivial to establish. This is completely trivial to establish because you are on this lattice here is a side 0, this is 1, this is minus 1. You want the probability that you come back to the origin and the second step ok. There are only two ways of doing this. One of them is to go here and come back here 
and the probability of that is one fourth because you have to go there, have to come back here instead of going north. And the other side, half to come here, half to come there, so that is one fourth, and one fourth plus one fourth is a half. So that is an Im immediate enumeration. Uh, similarly, F04 zero zero equal to 1 eighth. Now, what are the possible ways in which you can do this? So, here 0, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2 and so on. We want the probability that you come back on the to the origin on the fourth step. Well, clearly you cannot do this because you are back on the second step, right. So, you got to go here and you got to go there and then back here, back here, right. What is the probability of that happening? There are four of these fellows, each of them you have a probability half factor. So, that is 1 16th and the only other way you can do it is to come here, here and go back here and here in this fashion. That is 1 16th too. You add the two, you get 1 in. okay. So, that is okay. The next one is going to have non-trivial factors. You are going to be, there is going to be 3 factorial in the denominator and things like that. So, there are more than one way of doing that. So, clearly what is going to happen is that you could go up to this point and then come back in 6 steps, but you could do this and then come here. So, you have to allow for all those factors. In other words, you have to enumerate all these walks, but this is doing it automatically. This fellow is automatically doing this. So, once you write the binomial expansion of this, the matter is over. It is actually automatically telling you what is the coefficient. So, what has happened is actually an enumeration of walks. You have counted, you have counted all distinct paths such that on the end, two end step you are back into 0, okay. Yeah. But we want to come back in four steps. So, here is 1, here is 2. So, I come here, I cannot come back there. I have to go here hmm? and then I got to come back into the fourth step, two are over already. So, the only way I can do it is to come back in this fashion, there is no other possibility, right. So, there are only two walks, here. but the moment you have go to the next step 6, etcetera, etcetera, you have more possibilities and of course, you go to 2n in general, you have a large number of possibilities, the number of these walks would increase, okay. Incidentally, that also brings me to the following and uh, this is a good place to do that, but I will come back to this because it also leads to the concept of what is called renormalization of random box. We saw already in, in, in the case of a linear lattice that it takes on the average, it takes uh, 4 times as long to go twice as far. So, we put barriers at 2 ends at plus minus j and I said the first passage time to go from 0 to j is just j squared on this lattice. We solved a set of difference equations and I said it is just j squared. Oh, incidentally, we, we did that problem by saying here is 0, here is 1, here is j and on this side I said minus 1 and this is minus j and I said there is a barrier here, barrier here and starting from 0, what is the mean time to get to either of these fellows, a distance j right. But and then we got the answer j squared. So, this means if I increase the j from j I go to 2 j, then the answer is going to be 4 times as long, it is going to go to 4 j squared, right. So, that is the reason the walk dimension was 2 in this problem, okay. You need not have done it that way, you could have just said all right. I have a lattice starting at 0 on one side. I ask what is the time to go here and ask what is the time to go twice as far. And this thing is in some sense self similar, I can make this structure a self similar one as follows. Just like in the Sierpinski gasket, instead of considering lattices with one site and then two sites and three sites, four sites and so on, instead of doing that, I can rescale it in the following sense. I start at 0, 1, 
to pretend there are bonds here and I put I decorate it by putting a site extra site in the middle and then blowing it up. So, from this the next step would be to double the size So, what I have done is to put a site here and a site here and double the size that is one and it gives me that ok. I do the same thing the next step how many sites will there be? Well, there is one, two, three, four more I am going to add to the existing five right. So, it is going to be nine next time and the next time it is going to be 60, 17. So, it is 2 to the n plus 1 the fellow in the middle and then there is a 2 to the n because I am doubling it each time right. So, this structure is now self similar although the original lattice is a regular Euclidean lattice if I consider lattices with 3 sides, 5 sides and then after that 9 sides and so on 2 to the n plus 1 sides that is a hierarchical structure right and you can play the same game on it and discover that the time doubles each time. In fact, once I know that I can do it even more cheaply I can say I start at 0 and ask what is the time to go to 1 mean time it is 1 unit right. Now, I ask what is the mean time to go there 2 what would that be what is the answer I should get I should get 4 huh, for the average right how, how does that happen how does that happen in the first case to go from 0 to 1 there is just one there is just one walk that is it I flip there with probability 1 I am out I have finished. So, the mean time is just the deterministic time it is 1 right the next time around I can start here go here come back go do any number of times and then finally go there. So, I should be able to prove by counting over all the time steps here and all the walks that I end up with an answer which is 4. Okay. Now, to go to this place I can only do so in an even number of side steps. So, you only have to sum over you cannot do it in 0 steps you can do it in 2 steps right. So, you have to sum over 2, 4, 6, 2 k step random box. You have to sum over all these walks and for each one of them you have to find out what is the time taken multiply by the time taken and calculate the average and the answer should be 4. For instance, how many 4 steps walks would there be to go here? Hmm? Well, I go here and I must do it in 4 steps, so I cannot go here. I must come back that is second step, third step, fourth step right and there is only one such walk there is only one such walk hmm? and it is weighted by 4 number of steps is equal to time it is weighted by 4. How many 6 steps walks are there? I got to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right and how many such walks are there? One, one. Just 1. So, each time this is a trivial problem it is a trivial problem these 2 k steps these fellows of that the last 2 steps must be 1, 2 finished. So, that leaves 2 k minus 2 steps right. So, you have 2 k minus 2 which means twice k minus 1 pairs of going back and forth and that is all and each time when you are here remember the probability of jumping here is a half you have to be careful about that. So, I leave you to do this as an exercise to show that the weighted average the, the mean time to go here is going to be 4 
you must count all the walks carefully, weight it with the appropriate probability factors and so on. If you did the same thing here on this and this is going to take us to a non-trivial problem. So, I have 0, I have 1 and I have minus 1 and now I say all right I start at the origin, I have barriers at plus 1 and minus 1 and I ask what is the mean time it takes me to hit a barrier and the answer is 1 because whether I go right or whether I go left I hit a barrier and that is it at unit distance right. So, in this case T naught equal to 1. Let me call the mean time to hit the trap T naught is 1 right. Now, from this I go to this. So, here 0, minus 1, 1, minus 2, 2 and the traps are here. What is T naught equal to? This should be 4. This is what we have been saying all along. It should be 4 right. But you can do this now either by writing the difference equation which we wrote down for a Markov walk or better still by actually counting all the walks with appropriate probabilities. And I want to do that for a specific reason because I want to generalize to non-Markov walks. So, I do not want to use the Markovian backward Kolmogorov equation which had those nice difference equations or something. I am going to do a somewhat more general kind of random walk. So, now I say all right, uh, how do I figure out when I am going to hit this? What are the all the possible walks? Again remember to hit this point or this point, you can only do so in an even number of steps. Hmm? So, let us suppose that you do so in 2 hour steps. The last 2 steps must be straight like that. That is the only possibility, that is the only way you can go from here to there from the origin, right. So, clearly what is happening is that you have twice r minus 1 steps which consists of this or this interchanging between these 2 and then at the end you jump from here to there in this fashion, right. So, if you want to compute the number of walks from the origin to 2 or minus 2 in an even number of steps, you have to enumerate all possible walks. You have to ask how many of these walks there are. And clearly, the last two steps are quite deterministic depending on where you want to go here or here. But then, this many steps, this many walks are either to plus 1 and back to 0 or minus 1 and back to 0 because you should not hit plus or minus you want to hit it for the first time in the 2 hour step ok. And you have to now add all such walks and there are clearly 2 to the r plus 1 such walks, uh, 2 to the r minus 1 such walks. Ok. Because there are r minus 1 pairs and each pair is determined by do you go to the right or go to the left you have a choice and therefore, you have 2 to the r minus 1 choices in such box. Okay. So, we will use this fact, I will come back and we will use this fact here to show how a walk on a linear lattice can be uh, renormalized even in the more general case of non-Markov walks. Okay. Now, let us uh, switch gears and go to what a non-Markovian walk is okay. and we will do this in a specific framework called continuous time random walks. This is a technical term which is used in the physics literature it does not just refer to the fact that time is continuous because we looked at Markovian walks where the time was a continuous variable right. So, that is not what is in meant by this what is denoted by continuous time random walk is a very specific non-Markovian or generalization of a Markovian random walk in continuous time ok and it is uh, the, the problem is like this. Right? 
if you go back to the original one dimensional random walk problem, we did this in the Markov case in several ways. First, we said let us look at a lattice, one dimensional lattice, discrete space and then I said discrete time as well. So, we asked what is the probability that if you start at the origin, you are at a site j at time step n. Okay. We found the solution to that. In fact, the solution to that was if you started with uh, the origin here and some site j here, then the p of uh, being at j at time n starting from the origin, this was equal to n in n steps. The random variable here was j because you have given n time steps and now where, I, where do you end up? You end up at some j and the distribution of that j is given by this binomial distribution n minus j over 2, 1 over 2 to the n. Well, let us look at the unbiased case for simplicity. And what were the conditions here? You have given n the number of time steps. So, what are the conditions here for this probability? What should j be? Are there any restrictions on j? It is an integer of course, but what are the restrictions on this j? It should be less than or equal to n. So, this says mod j less than or equal to n and n minus j even. You cannot end up at a site for an even number of time steps, you can only end up with an even site not an odd site. So, p was equal to 0 otherwise, otherwise it was equal to this binomial distribution. So, that was one way of doing it. Then I said ok, let us look at this problem not in discrete space, we leave space discrete, but let us look at it in continuous time. And then I wrote difference equations with the differential on the left hand side with respect to time. So, I said dp over dt. Uh, so, we said uh, dp uh, j t over dt was equal to and I said huh, you had to reach you, you had to jump from the site j minus 1 or the site j plus 1 and with some mean rate lambda. So, I put some lambda here and said this is p j minus 1 t plus p j t minus uh, sorry j plus 1 t. These were the gain terms, but you could also jump out from this fellow with the total probability 1. So, this guy was minus uh, So, I had a set of uh, difference differential equations of this kind. T was continuous here and the statement was that in the time axis these jumps occur completely at random dictated by a Poisson process with some mean rate lambda. So, that lambda over 2 is the mean rate of jumps to the right and lambda over 2 is the mean rate of jumps to the left because it was an unbiased walk. So, what is the solution to this? We have got an explicit solution here, it is a binomial distribution. What is the solution there? Now, there is no time step, it is gone. So, there is no question of even number of steps, odd number of steps, time is continuous out here. And this I did by solving. Uh, I solve this by saying let us find a generating function for this fellow sum over z to the power. So, I put b of uh, j comma t z to the power j sum from j equal to minus infinity to infinity. I call this sum generating function. Let us call this g. I do not know what symbol I use then g of z comma t. It is not a power series in positive powers of z because this fellow here is running minus infinity to infinity. It is a Laurent series, we do not care what. And what did this give you? Finally, we got a simple equation for this guy, for this g and then I read out the coefficient. In fact, the answer I got for this was e to the minus lambda t e to the power 
plan the T uh, z plus 1 over z. That is the answer I got for that and from there I said okay I now look at the coefficient of z in it and what was the solution? This got solved and uh, p of uh, j comma t starting from the origin of course was equal to e to the minus lambda t the modified Bessel function lambda t of index j and i minus j is equal to i plus j because this is completely symmetric with j to minus j unbiased walk. If I had a bias then I had an alpha over beta to the power j over 2 sitting there and, so. and then this was uh, lambda t is twice lambda t square root of alpha beta. But in the unbiased case you had this. So discrete space, discrete time, discrete space, continuous time, again a Markov process that was a Markov chain, this is a Markov process. And then I went to the continuum limit in the space variable by putting a lattice constant and putting in uh, limit. So I said uh, j times a tends to x, this is a lattice constant and I said lambda a squared <coughs> over 2 tends to a finite number d. So lambda tends to infinity, a tends to 0 such that this fellow tends to d and I got the diffusion equation. So the solution for the probability density function in x was the famous Gaussian e to the minus x squared over 4 dt and so on. This equation, this thing here went over into delta p of x t over delta t more good d, d 2 p of x t over delta x 2 and I found the Gaussian solution to this, right. So what really happened was that from this if you know went over to continuous time by saying that these jumps are happening at random instance of time guided by some Poisson process, you know, uncorrelated jumps. Then you end up with a Markov process whose solution is this Bessel function here and if you now went to a continuous space limit as well with this particular limit you got the diffusion equation and its solution was the Gaussian solution. So this would imply the same initial conditions. It uh, told you that p of x t was e to the minus x squared over 4 d t the square root of 4 pi dt. So that is a continuous Markov process. It is uh, Brown in motion essentially Brown. x of t was a stochastic process, a Wiener process which is a non-stationary Markov process and there is a fundamental so Gaussian solution for the probability density, okay. Now if I want to say okay at what stage can I make this process non-Markov? One way to do this, one way to do this from this is the following is to say all right this is okay, this is the probability that you are at the site j at step n, nth time step. And let us suppose I always start from the origin. So, for ease of notation, let me write it like this. N. But now I say, look, in a given interval of time, I might have made any number of jumps. I do not have to do this at uniform one second intervals or a time fixed time step. I might have made it randomly with some random process underlying. I might have made any number of jumps. Then this quantity here p of j t this would become a summation out here hmm, over n the number of jumps hmm, times the probability that uh, let, let me use a subscript here so that uh, you get the idea is clear p n of j. Let me call this the binomial coefficient that we had. I want to distinguish it from this function here times the probability that you make n jumps in time t. So this is the probability of n jumps or n in time t. 
or n lattice steps in time t hmm? summed over n from 0 to infinity in principle. Okay. So, what is it that we are doing? We are saying that the same random walk that I have in discrete space by saying at the end of every second or every time step tau I flip a coin I move to the right or left gave me this guy. So, in n steps the probability of being at some point j and this was a binomial coefficient. This is the guy which was n n minus 0 over 2 1 over 2 to the n. But now I say all right I could have made any number of steps I could have taken in a given time t continuous time t because these steps are now being taken randomly. All I have to then do is to say all right the probability of reaching the geometrical point j in n steps is this that is the combinatorial factor with this probability factor that I put in because I can go right or left. But now that is multiplied by the probability that you take exactly n steps in any given time t okay. and then you sum over all n over all possibilities and you are guaranteed to get the probability that you are going to be at the side j at time t because you could have reached that in any number of steps going back and forth okay. and all the constraints about j less than n etcetera uh, are included here in this guy. Whatever this is, this is quite independent. Now, under what circumstances, what kind of w is going to give you that? What a Poisson distribution, of course, because that is the whole point. This is a these jumps are happening in an uncorrelated way completely. So, the only way that can happen, it can become a Markov process is if the number of the probability that you have n jumps in time t is a Poisson process is Poisson distributed huh? with the same lambda. So, if this guy if and only if w of n t equal to lambda t to the power n over n factorial e to the minus lambda t then it implies this the Markovian walk. any other normalizable distribution of course, what you are trying to say is that at any given time t at any given time t you must certainly have this summation n equal to 0 to infinity w of n t equal to 1 for any positive t because any given time t you must make either 0 jumps or 1 jump or 2 jumps normalized. Okay. So, this is a probability distribution in the number n for a given t in the random variable n which takes on non negative integer values okay. and when that becomes a Poisson with this mean rate lambda it is exactly equivalent to saying that the random walk in continuous time is a Markov process which satisfies this difference differential equation. In this case, okay. Therefore, any other choice of this probability distribution is going to give you jumps which are correlated to each other. So, this is not an uncorrelated sequence uh, crosses on the time axis there is some memory. Okay. So, any functional form other than the Poisson form for this w of n and t is going to give you a non Markovian random walk okay. and this is called a continuous time random walk. Now, what kind of uh, process do we want here? You can put anything you like, uh, but we would like to have something which is a generalization of this Markovian walk. What characterized this walk actually? What characterized it was the fact that in any time interval dt, you had a probability lambda dt that there was a cross in it and a probability 1 minus lambda dt that there was no cross in it. Okay. The probability 
in an infinitesimal time interval of having two crosses was of order d t squared and higher order. That was the whole point about this uh, Poisson process, right. Now, the basic point is what is the probability waiting time distribution for a jump to happen, for an event to happen? That is that was a crucial point because everything got generated from that, right. So, the question is starting the clock at 0, what is the waiting time distribution such that between t and t plus d t you had a cross. Okay. Okay. What is that distribution? Well, for the Poisson we know the answer. What is the probability that till time t nothing happens? e to the minus lambda t, right. The rate of change of that probability with a minus sign is going to be the probability that you have a transition. So, e to the minus lambda t is the probability that if you start the clock at 0 till time in t nothing has happened, no jumps, right. Now, you want the probability of a jump to happen. Okay? That is the holding time waiting time or holding time distribution in renewal theory and this holding time is got to be some function. So, this thing is also called holding time. It is some function psi of t which must satisfy the following properties. First of all, it is a distribution probability function. So, it cannot be negative. It must satisfy 0 to infinity d t psi of t equal to 1, which means you wait long enough there has to be a jump. So, it is normalized. Hmm? And it must be the time derivative of this guy e to the minus lambda t with a minus sign because at the rate at which like the survival probability the minus the time derivative of it gave you the first passage time distribution exactly the same way. What is minus the derivative of this guy? Lambda e to the minus lambda t. So, this means that psi of t equal to lambda e to the minus lambda t this guy you can see that it immediately satisfies that normalization condition is the waiting time distribution for a Markovian random walk or more generally for a Markovian process. Now, of course, once you say that one event occurs, we, we saw how to generate the Poisson sequence from the 0 event probability, you can find the probability probability that one event will occur by multiplying this by lambda d t integrating and so on and you generate the rest of the Poisson sequence. Right? So, a general statement is that if you give me an arbitrary psi of t which satisfies this condition non negative psi of t which satisfies this integrable this normalization condition I have a non Markovian walk in general, right? but a very special kind of walk in the sense that it is the same waiting time density for all these events. Okay. Even that need not be true. It could be that the waiting time for the first step is different from the waiting time for the second step or the third step and so on. Then I lose translation invariance in time. Right? But if I say look there is a common psi of t and the waiting time is independent of the step number is drawn from the same common distribution this is a much simpler problem it is called a renewal process it is a generalization of a Markov process. Okay. So, a non exponential waiting time density this is a density probability density because I integrate it I get the total probability this uh, non exponential waiting time density implies a non Markovian walk. 
But what is the great advantage of choosing this psi of t, a common psi of t? Well, what will be the waiting time density w of uh, n t for n such guys? What will w of n and t be? So, now I tell you the waiting time density for a jump is psi of t some form hmm? probability density function psi of t. What is w of n and t? And I also tell you further that it is the same waiting time density for all these guys. So, what will psi of t n comma t be? Hmm? There is translation invariance here. Hmm? So, what is the what is w of 2 comma t? W of 1 comma t is psi of t by definition. What is W of 2 comma t? Hmm? Why should it be so? It is clear that you want 0 here and in this interval t I want 2 of these guys. They could happen anywhere one of them happens with some psi of t that leaves or psi of t prime that leaves time t minus t prime for the other guy to happen right. So, what will the waiting time density for two steps be psi 1 of t is identically psi of t. Hmm? What is psi 2 of t equal to? It is got to be equal to 0 to t dt prime psi of t prime psi of t minus t prime because that is the time left for the second guy to happen. And we already said that the waiting time density for one fellow to happen is precisely psi of t. So, this is the time available for it and what is this in the form of? <coughs> A convolution, right? So you immediately see that we don't have a simple expression for this, but we do have one for w tilde of n comma s. It's psi tilde of s to the power n. That is great because this now tells you we work in Laplace space all the time. We work in terms of Laplace transforms and finally, we will take a inverse transform. Right? So, it is really telling you that we can solve this problem <coughs> because now look at what is going to happen to my p of j comma t. There is a p of j comma t and this was equal to p n j and then there was a w of n comma t summed over n but i take the laplace transform of this i get this out here and that gives me this and i cancel this and write this as psi tilde of s to the power n that is like the generating function for this fellow with z replaced by this function. Hmm? So, if I can write the generating function and substitute psi tilde of s then in principle I can invert the transform and find this p of j comma t hmm? without going through the any mastery equations or anything like that at all. Okay. So, we will do this tomorrow. Okay. So, you see the strategy and the idea that how you generalize from a Markov process. Of course, you check all the time by putting psi of t is lambda e to the minus lambda t you check whether it is going to work or not in the other case. What is uh, what psi tilde of s for uh, the Markov case when it is lambda e to the minus lambda t?
course, of course. Remember psi tilde of 0 must be equal to 1 because of this. You can ask what is the mean waiting time? That is of course integral t psi of t dt, which is the first derivative of psi tilde of s with minus at s equal to 0. Okay. So, once you actually give me this, I do not even go back to time. If you give me this, I work entirely in terms of Laplace transforms. I can find any moment or whatever I like using this. So, the thing to do now is to generalize this to higher dimensions. I will show you how to solve this in a general lattice in arbitrary dimensions by exploiting the fact that for a renewal process all that happens is that this uh, probability in the Laplace space the probability of n jumps becomes a power of some transform of some waiting time density. Okay. And then we can determine from that that is enough to determine what is going to be the long time behavior of this walk. Long time in uh, t space is equal to s going to 0 in Laplace transform space. So, we are going to use these asymptotic theorems to discover what is going to happen at long times if it is diffusive or not sub diffusive or whatever. Hmm? So, this is the general strategy we will do this tomorrow.